So back when I was a lad, this is what the future looked like. And every time I come through the Virgin Lounge, I sit there. <coughs> I'm not going to explain the reference, but I am not a number. Um, so where are we? Where are we? Um, apart from somewhere near San Francisco, as far as my sense of direction does it. Um, we, our influence in the community is growing. Uh, people want to listen to what we on Lenaro say about where to go. And, and part of that is quite obvious in that the limits kernel in general is very driven by very slow forces that are based around a fairly static uh, architecture, particularly around the platform, but even the instruction set. And it's not that um, engaging for, for the traditional diverse arm space. So a lot of the subsystems in the kernel are actually fairly primitive or not very adaptable. And we're coming along and saying, power management want to do this and other things want to do that. So that's good, we've influenced the growing. Um, we've got a continual integration process in, in place um, where we're forever you know, trying to, in this improvement loop, building stuff, testing stuff. We've got requirements and a roadmap, and Lloyd's going to make that even better. There's a very good database of requirements, um, which is always good. Technically, um, this is Ubuntu 12.04, and it's a little random. Sort of. um, we, um, we're tackling a lot of heavy lifting programs, um, and there's a lot of refactoring of the ARM kernel, so the whole ARM SOC thing that started up last year, lots of shoveling code in the right place, and so we've got Lava, Androids everywhere, um, uh, which makes Zach happy, well, that's a good thing, and servers coming, and there's lots of new architecture. So that's kind of where we are. We've had um, a year and a half of Linaro going from nothing to this, so done pretty well. But I like to learn things. When I work with people, I like to learn things from them, not just technical things, how things work. Um, I like to learn new fit, new tricks. Uh, I like to learn from George. George likes to simplify things, because he's a bear of small brain, so he likes to break things down. And <laughs> do it. So um, work with me, come on. Um, OK, so Tudor Brown who's one of the founders of ARM, has just retired. Lucky man, he's two years younger than me, and he's off to build a house somewhere in, in Cornwall. Um, but as, and I bumped into him a couple of times, flying to Austin last time a few weeks ago, and, and recently at an ARM event. And I thought, well, what did I learn from Tudor? I learned lots of things, actually. Um, he kept asking, what does the customer actually want? This is something that's very deep in the ARM and the ARM partner psyche. What does, what does the customer actually want? I might go off and do this engineering, but am I solving customer problems? Or am I just kind of solving my problems? Um, don't over-engineer the solution. You can never, ever build the perfect thing that's future-proof. Well, you can. It'll take years, and then you run out of funding. So it's always good to you know, solve the problems in an incremental way, keep moving forwards. It's the Linux way, and it works too. Uh, so phase your approach, you know, three phases, each with a stable point, is better than a big bang that never happens. Um, and the thing I really like from Tudor is this fine simplicity beyond the complexity. Now you can, um, I won't use a rude word, but you, you can write slides with three bullet points and it looks very simple. And you haven't done the engineering and the brain effort to get to the simple point. So there's complexity first that you have to get through to get the simplicity. So I quite like that philosophy. So based on that, um, I thought, OK, well, what is, what is the Lenaro missions at this point? Where are we? So I need to be able to see it both ways. So um, I boiled it down to three things. Three is good. It's less than five. I can put it on one hand. Um, we, when we started Lenaro, there's a lot of clearing up a mess after it had occurred. Mess is perhaps too strong a word, but a lot of the ARM 8, ARM 9 stuff, um, really, really a lot of refactoring. And I want to move to a position where we're avoiding that. Uh, let's get the agreement, let's get the right things in place. Think about ARM V8. I don't want to start off with a fragmented story in V8. Um, power management. Now, my battery in here is an 8 cell. It's very heavy. The fans come on all the time, and it doesn't last 10 hours. So I think 10 hours is the kind of magical battery life. I don't want people walking into a room and having to look for the power source, right? So 10 hours is, think about 10 hours as the battery life, and, and, and let that drive everything you do. And the other thing, um, the third point, is kind of what we used to call time to market. And it's kind of like, we are delivering stuff, 
that, that people will actually build real products out of that appear in Christmas and then in your pocket in January or whatever. So we've got to deliver them reliably, boringly on time, uh, and into these products, which means product quality. So think about those things. So, testing and validation. Oops. I don't understand open office. It doesn't really work properly. Um, so Lava, I think Lava is really great. I think it's a really great infrastructure, but let me, let's think about it a bit. How easy is it to deploy a member's IP flow? You know, if I'm on, how easy is it for me to take the uh, Lava, pull it in and start using it, start building my stuff now, my secret stuff I haven't released to the greater world yet. Um, we also need to move, as George said, to um, deep testing. We need to move away from, yeah, that appears to work, smoke test, didn't crash, I can play a little bit of video, yeah, that works good, it's good, to um, scenario-based testing. I, th I think you can't kind of test the component level, you want to test it's all interacting and working. Uh, and we need to be vicious. I want people to find Cat1 software bugs in the kernel. I don't know of any testing effort anywhere openly, or actually proprietary, that has really found deep problems in the kernel. Most appear to have been found by inspection. You know, I quite like Eric Raymond's idea of many eyes seeing problems, but we've got to get, um, you've got to get methodical in engineering about this. The other thing is, if you're going to go do some power management changes, that you think will make you a better, ba uh, better battery life, then you've got to measure and improve it, please. So just like the compiler, it's worth 2 or 3% performance improvement by you know, emitting better code, better thumb 2 code. Um, well, you have to do the same thing on power management. You have to prove that it's better. Oh so the Linux kernel, um, I couldn't find a born to frag men. So born to frag is similar. Um, so there's a lot of refactoring work, so there's still a lot of code to shovel and systems to re-engineer, and that's great, you know, and that, that will that will take over time. Uh, so I want to move from fragment, you know, after the fact clearing up to, to avoiding it. There's a lot of new platforms coming out. Don't forget A15 is coming out, we've got Big Little, um, which George talked about. A15 has virtualization, there's the whole server stuff with LPAE, um, and in order to prevent that fragmentation, we need to get systems and code and bits in place um, fast or reasonably quickly. And for that, we need more kernel influence. So we need more ARM maintainers to step up and out of the little uh, platform silo and into the greater Linux world. Um, we need to make ARM a key Linux architecture. So um, John Corbett said this in Linux Weekly News that this year you know, would be the year that ARM became one of the two architecture supported by Linux. I think that's a fairly achievable thing. I want to be the one, because I want to drive the agenda rather than follow it. And of course, we have to get ready for V8. Don't forget, V8 is you know, new instruction set, whilst the, the exception model is more or less the same, tidied up in terms of four levels of exception. That's a lot of code coming out. Um, and all of that code needs to come out in an unfragmented way and, and be properly supported. Get this right up here. So, power management, let's say 10 hours, that's my challenge. There's a lot of good foundation work, I think, happened in power management. Over time, it's really built up around CPU freak, CPU idle. There are still those perverted lost souls who think that hot plug is a good idea, but we, you know, we'll, we'll work that one out. Um, so, and, you know, uh, as I was saying, you need lava instrumentation to prove the improvements. It's pointless putting code in. Um, and just hoping it will be better. You have to measure it in real systems. And Big Little is a really key technology here. And I think it's um, very much part of the power management mission to really get a hold of that, particularly in the MP case, and, um, and really understand how to adapt Linux to make the best advantage of these, these heterogeneous in power sense systems. So I stole the diagram from Robin Rantoir, so if it's wrong, it's his fault. Um, so just to explain a little bit, George talked about this, I'm not going to talk too far, but the idea of, um, of task migration is where you have two clusters of the same size, A7, A15, and you switch the whole um, operating system and all of its threads and processes from one place to the other. Um, you could think of it on, as, a, as points on scale of, of like uh, CPU, frequency, CPU scaling or CPU frequency scaling. Um, and you can do it in a fairly static way. You say, look, I need more power, I'll go and run on big for a bit. 
um, because big will you know do computes faster, but will be less energy efficient, and I would, or I want to be in low power, and that gets you a few points on the graph and, and significant improvements, and is a good thing. In the longer term, um, NP, i.e. scheduling across all of the cores, gives you more points of performance and different ways of achieving that performance. So you could, for instance, say instead of running on two small cores, run on a big core. Um, that might be the right thing for that particular mix of applications that don't spread very well across cores. So there's lots of subtlety around MP where you're running in different areas. And I want you to think about a phased approach to this. There is a wonderful world where Linux automatically understands and, and, and measures what processes are doing, where they're scheduling and the loads they're creating, and a, a world where you've annotated your CPUs for different performance and battery life characteristics, and it all just magically works. Meanwhile, I can bet that Android will probably do it in a fairly static way fairly quickly based on what they want, set of things and scenarios they run. So we need a phased approach, so please think about that this week. So uh, media acceleration, I want to include everything. Um, so the idea here is, um, for a, at any given moment, you should be running, um, using different parts of the system to get the best battery life and performance out of it. And that's a very subtle argument. That includes the GPU, DSPs, or whatever. And people expect 10 hours of battery life playing games, uh, playing videos, um, without a very large battery. And it's kind of difficult, this one, because it's very distribution stroke OS specific. So, you know, Android's got its own media layers and video layers and graphics layers and, you know, generic standard Linux has and Migo's different and, you know, that's just the way it is. But in general, I think Lenaro should concentrate on the kernel, but it's hard to do that without the rest of the system. Uh, I'm nearly there, I think. Um, oops. Could operate this would be good. That's right, tool chain. So um, one of the things that we did very early on was um, we thought tool, we realized that tool chain was a really important area to invest on early, and we did, and there's lots of really, really good work. And that's great. So we now have, you know, best in class, world class GCC for our Linux that, that flies along, lots of improvements. There's always more you can do, there's always more you can tune, and that's fine. But I think we need to turn our attention to the whole system. And you know, how, how, do, you balance, how do you balance where you do the compute across uh, and, and which system components to use? Is OpenCL the answer in Linux land, or is it something else, and is it whatever Android invents? You know, um, I think we should be starting to answer those questions rather than waiting for someone to tell us. That's the fundamental shift. Um, and the other thing, it's obvious that uh, web-based stuff is more important. I can't remember the percentage of Android applications that are web-based as opposed to installable applications. Maybe it's 20, 30 percent. But those are all going to be running on MP systems, big little systems, and other systems. So what's the most efficient way of supporting those. Does render script spread itself nicely across many threads, across many calls? I don't know. So, that's it. That was my ramble through technology and future stuff. <laughs>